right, we'll, go, we'll proceed. <laughs> Far away. So we're, I'm just starting out channeling and um, we've been channeling different spirits and releasing spirits mm -hmm. with some success, I, I imagine. Yeah. It's hard to sort of gauge, get a good gauge on it. Mm -hmm. um, but lately there's been single mums that have, we've tried to help. Mm -hmm. and, um, single mums on earth, you mean, or in the yeah. spirit world? Well, on earth. On earth, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And inevitably there's a band of these angry women. With them, yes. With them. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of fear with, with this person trying to... They've been desperately trying to get past this issue with neediness to men or having an injury uh, from the parents, yep. I assume. Um, I was just wondering if I could get a bit of insight into how to proceed because I get to the point where... They're very difficult to move on. These these women and trying to trying to get some sort of conversation meaningful. There's a lot of so much anger, so much fierce. And uh, you're a man as well. Uh, which, and I'm a man as well. Which makes it more difficult. Yeah, yeah. we've 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 done some had some success with female channels. Yeah, and that's obviously better. Makes <clears throat> no, I don't feel it's obviously better. No. Well, but we've had more success. You know, you'll have more seeming success, but that doesn't mean you have more success. The reason why is because the, the, the female channel is just acceding to the, to the women's spirit's addiction that they don't address the man. So, so at the end of the day, of course it's going to be easier, but at the end of the day it doesn't necessarily mean that they've resolved anything okay, towards men. Interesting. Yep. Does that make sense? Mm. So if we, if we look at the dynamics of what's actually happening to, to mo a lot of people who are single on earth, and this applies to males and females that are single on earth, not in relationship, and not in relationship for long terms or periods of time... So whether they are a woman or a man, let's choose the example you've given, a woman, um, they're often associated or surrounded by the same gender sex in the spirit world of women who have had a very, very similar hurtful experience to the woman who's on earth. So, for example, the woman on earth might have had some previous hurtful experiences with men. For example, rejection by her father from father, let's just, uh, a feeling of being um, uh, controlled by father, yeah. a feeling of being manipulated by dad, a feeling of not being wanted, loved. And then often during their life they've attracted a lot of men who've treated them generally sometimes quite abusively as well. Mm. So there's a tendency towards abusive uh, based relationships. Um, which, which enhances, if you like, or increases the anger they feel. Yep. Now remember always that anger usually is the result of our addictions not being met. And that our addictions get created because we don't want to feel our fears. And our fears are created because we generally have a lot of grief that people do not want us to experience. And so what they do is they, you know, cause us to get into a state of fear about feeling our grief. And so then we are also, and then for most women, fear is a terrible feeling to feel, and so they'll revert to the addiction. For most men, men are willing generally to feel their fears a little more, but not less so their emotional fears, but the greatest emotional fear in most men is grief. Now, the greatest emotional fear in women is not grief. Most women are more comfortable with grief. Their greatest emotional fear is fear. In other words, the, the, the opposition that most women have to dealing with their emotions is not to do with their grief but their fear. The opposition that most men have to dealing with their emotions is their grief. Right? A lot of men will embrace fear-based situations whereas a woman will always try to run generally from a fear-based situation unless the woman is angry <laughs> then she'll address the situation. Now, that's a general flow, and that applies to both genders, right? Whatever is happening with both genders. So if we look at what's going on, this woman here, 
Obviously, she has a lot now of fear about her relationship with men because of these emotions that are now within her. And that causes her then to be very wary of entering long-term relationships. So she might finish up having a sexual relationship, but not living with a person or having a long-term relationship with a person. Or she'll, um, you know, she'll constantly... She'll feel that she's better off single, is probably the best way of putting it. Yep. And the same applies to a male in a similar situation where a male is surrounded by a heap of angry men. He'll feel he's better off single and he'll use women how he wants to use them but he won't want to engage a relationship with them for, for similar or different reasons. But here we have, we have the troop, shall we call them, <laughs> of spirits, sometimes quite large numbers actually. And, um, and these spirit, spirits wish to in, make this person... Um, feel safer and secure and, and feel like uh, they don't have to have a relationship with a man and all those kind of mm. things. So, so these women already have these beliefs themselves. All of those women feel that way towards men. Mm. Now that they're in the spirit world, of course, often they feel that way towards men much more strongly than they allowed themselves to feel while they're on earth. Right? And so what they do is they band together in groups generally and then they surround a woman on earth who they feel needs their assistance or seems to want their assistance. The same applies to a male who's being influenced by a group of men in the spirit world. Same sort of, same sort of thing applies. And sometimes she'll even have a group of men surrounding her at the same time, right, who want to pander to the woman who's angry. So they'll pander to those and they'll pander to those and so those women will let those men be around mm. as a result. So it starts to get pretty complicated from a, from a spirit perspective in terms of the influences upon the individual. Now, any influence of a spirit on an individual is totally about the addictions of the individual. Mm. So if I've got a group of spirits surrounding me who are influencing me in a certain direction... That is because my addiction to want them surrounding me and that I am unwilling to confront them on a number of levels. And this is not just about their agreement with my emotion. It's also about my fear of confronting their emotion. So, if you're a woman who's had a series of negative experiences with a male and then you sit down in a table with a group of ten other women and all of them have had negative experiences with a male, and then all of a sudden you, as that woman, start to have a good experience with a male, and you start relating this good experience to the ten women who have only had negative experiences with a male, what do you think the general response of those, negative, of those other women were going to be? They'll be saying things like, oh, there's only one of them and you can never trust them anyway and you don't know whether he's like that and there's probably things you haven't found out about him. And, and, and in the end, it's going to be very, very difficult for you in that group of people to actually fully embrace your own feelings of trust when they are all reflecting back at you their own mistrust. Right? And so what's, what often happens is that Besides having this group of emotions with men, there is also a list of emotions that the same woman will have with women. And that will be things like this. Fear of rejection from the actual women as well. Fear of anger. And so forth. A lot of it will be related to fear towards the same gender. So this is what she feels towards the opposite gender and this is what she feels towards the same gender. And this is how little groups occur where we eventually go down the track of going, um, you know, we all get to, all the men get together with their mates, have a bit of a bitch session about their women and, and, but none of them say any of those things to their women. Right? And then all the women get together with their friends and they have a bit of a bit section with, about their men, but none of them say any of those things towards their men. Right? And, and what that does is it maintains the intergender emotional injuries and we seek out the people who will support our injury, right? which is very counterproductive to our future growth, both towards God and also towards any soulmate relationship. 
The reality is we need to somehow confront these emotions. Now, when you start speaking to a group of spirits who are surrounding the person, you've got to bear in mind that this person is attracting this group of spirits. And this person needs to look at their reasons why they want these spirits with them. Now, there is a lot of people who on earth who have spirits surrounding them and who know they have spirits surrounding them. And then when you say to them, you want them with you, they'll bite your head off, basically, because they, they feel that they don't want them with them. And that is a lack of honesty. Because the reality is the law of attraction works perfectly. There is something in our soul that attracts this group of women. And in this case, there's two things. There's the fear of the group of women who are angry with men. And there is the anger with the men that attracts such a group that is inside the person. Does that make sense? So they are afraid of women who feel the same way and they are angry with the men who treated them badly. And so what they want, the only kind of men they'll actually accept in their life is a group of men who pander to them. But of course they won't want a relationship with them because it's not equal and, and therefore you feel like you're always nursing them and, and of course you never finish up having an equal relationship and so no relationship can really last very long unless you are perfectly embracing the addiction. The problem with perfectly embracing an addiction is generally what we do, we initially embrace an addiction and we feel great about it and then six months later all the other parts of the problems of the relationship start appearing and because the addiction is no longer getting met we no longer feel an attraction and, uh, and so we leave that relationship and go on to another one uh, who meets our addiction and then they meet our addiction for three months, six months, nine months, a year maybe and then all of a sudden we're no longer getting that addiction met either and so we no longer want that relationship or we detune from that relationship. For some of us we get married to them and then we feel like we're bound to stay with them for the rest of our life and so we do even though we don't really like them very much at all after a while which is often happens in a relationship. Either way it's all driven from a reason within the person's soul as to all of these attractions. Now if you're trying to help a group of spirits who are surrounding the person without addressing the addiction in the person then that person is going to continue to, to attract spirits like this into their lives constantly. Mm. Sometimes you're better off, if this person here is not willing to deal with their addictions, you're better off leaving the original group of spirits with the person than you are trying to get those spirits to move forward. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the reason why is that, uh, is that they're going to be much more comfortable with this group than another group that comes along who they don't know. <coughs> and they also are not being truthful with themselves in the sense that they need to address the underlying emotion that causes the addiction. Mm. Just let me have a cough. So, what I would suggest that needs to occur with any form of helping a spirit when you know those spirits are surrounding an individual is this. This person's emotional addictions need to be accurately addressed. And if that person demonstrates a willingness to address those addictions, then it would be wise also to discuss things with the spirits with them. Now, the spirits with them, if this person is willing to address their addictions, the spirits with that person will go through a series of um, what I would classify as interactions with the individual. The first interaction is they will threaten her. If she is truly sincere about dealing with her addictions, these spirits will threaten her because these spirits will want to maintain the addiction. So they will threaten her with things like, you know, if she enters a relationship, they'll go, he's going to treat you bad, he's going to treat you bad. And they're, they're, it's like having people in your ear constantly all day saying, he's going to treat you bad, he's going to treat you bad, he's going to make your life hard, he's going to treat you badly. Notice what he's doing here, see there's something up to that. And there's, notice what he's doing there, they make you very suspicious, right? So these spirits will do that firstly because they want to maintain the, their addiction of having control of this woman. Right? And now if this woman is very sincere, she will address why she's so afraid of these women. She will work her way through that. Right? And therefore, when we start to discuss with this group of women what's going on, 
if this person isn't giving them the approval that they need, now we have much greater opportunity to help this group of spirits to move forward in their life. But if this person is holding on to their addictions for dear life and doesn't, don't, doesn't want to release any of their addictions at all, then this group of spirits are going to be attracted to her and it's going to be very hard for this group of spirits even to move forward because they're going to feel drawn back to feeding the addiction all the time. So one of them, either them or them or this person, has to get rid of their addictions for the relationship to break. And we want the relationship to break as it is because it's not loving. Yeah. Um, but it, so it's a matter of helping either this person or this group of people with their addictions. Mm. If you can help one or the other, then the relationship can break and then you can actually work on the actual emotional issues inside the person. Yeah. So if, she, if, if, if she's mediumistic, does that make it even more accentuated, does it? Or? Yes, if she is mediumistic, she will feel their impressions much more strongly. Mm. She will feel their pressure a lot more strongly. When they threaten her, she will actually feel that strongly as well. She will feel frightened for no particular reason. Mm. Um, she'll, she'll look at a man and even have feelings like the thoughts that enter her mind that these guys are going, no, don't look at her. You know, like she'll, any, any sign of an attraction in her towards a male, these spirits will be attempting to influence in a negative direction. They will only allow her to get together with a pandering male. Mm. Right? That's all they will allow her to do. And even many of them won't even allow that. Yep. Um, so this is all just one core emotion? No, no. This is, this is all the emotions, the group of emotions relating to her father or during her childhood relating to men that got created through her interactions with men. So it's not just one emotion. It can be a whole group or series of emotions. Okay. Yep. Um, what are they... When we embark on them and start channelling, mm. it's almost like the spirits come out like they're annoyed because they're actually... In the spotlight? There's, there's exactly. Many of these people who are controlling people on Earth have been used to doing it for many, many years without being exposed. And so as soon as they get exposed, there is the potential of a breakdown in this relationship. You know, if this person knew they were being influenced so much, they might change. Mm. So what, what a lot of these spirits attempt to do is they attempt to have this person not know that they're being influenced so much. Does that make sense? Mm. And, and quite often I've seen this happen in audiences where a person asks me a question about the spirit influence they're under, I start speaking them to them about the influence and they go to sleep while I'm speaking to them. <laughs> That's how strong the influence of this group of spirits is on many people. Mm. They can even just cause you to shut down. Oh, I, can't. I didn't hear that, I didn't hear that. And some of the recordings that we've done, you'll hear people say, oh, I didn't even hear anything you just said. And that's because they you know, turning off their ears, you know, trying to shut them down. And they have so much control over the person mm. that they can do this at will. And so the person doesn't realise that they're being heavily influenced a lot of their life by a group of spirits who want them to be, remain in the same space. And, that they, and if they knew the influence were occurring, they might be less involved in the addiction. Does that make sense? Mm. So when you start discussing with them, this is an addiction, this is something inside of you that's avoiding these particular emotions or these particular emotions or both, and once you start describing that to them, they start realising, ah, I don't want to be controlled by a group of spirits, and like I don't want to be controlled by these women, I do want to have a relationship at the end, you know, I do want to have my soulmate or whatever. And so she starts feeling like she wants to work through things, now these spirits are in a very exposed state because they now can no longer have the same influence on her but they want the influence back. So now they'll threaten her or bribe her, you know, with emotions usually. So, so the threats come with emotions of anger and rage and the bribes come with like, I'll give you a nice pretty feeling as long as you do what I want type of thing. Yeah? And these spirits will attempt to do that with the person. Mm. This person is going to have to be very sincere about addressing their particular emotions if this relationship is ever going to break. Mm. Yeah. So there's a hook. The, they often... Sorry. Yeah, just hold sorry. it up a bit. Uh, they often have um, a lot of anger. They, they, they're 
I think the hook is that they, they get the powerful anger. Yes. And one of the hooks they're, is they're addicted to that. Remember, every time spirits are drawn to us, we have a hook. So if you liken it like a big fish hook, you know, like imagine this is a hook and a big fish hook that's, uh, that's hooked into those people. And, and the hook is all about we don't feel powerful, we need these people to feel powerful. We don't feel loved, we need these people with us to feel loved. We don't feel like we're acknowledged, we need these people to acknowledge us. We might have thousands of different emotional hooks that cause specific spirits to be attracted to us. And the, if we're personally not willing to address the emotional hook that draws mm. them to us, then we'll be totally under their influence Why we want them with us. And when I say totally, for many people, it is total. We, we did a talk in London uh, at the beginning of this year and the very first talk we gave in London, which you might, I think it is on YouTube now, um, there was about, uh, in the entire audience, there was about 80 or 90 people in the audience and, and the majority of the people in the audience were completely overcloaked by spirits. In other words, the whole reason why they had actually come was because spirits wanted to come. And the question, like, there was one lady up in the back asking me questions and her head, eyes were rolling back in her head while she was asking me the question. So she was just totally overcoat by a spirit. And when I addressed that, that spirit just, just went silent. And then the woman just looked at me as like, Am I, are you interacting with me or what's going on? Like, she was totally confused about what was going on. Mm -hmm. and, and that's because many of us are so strongly influenced that we, and we prefer the influence because it makes us feel strong or it makes us feel like somebody loves us, makes us feel mm. like somebody cares for us and so forth. And, and it also guides a lot of our day-to-day -day life. Like a lot of our life's decisions are made not by ourselves but by people saying, do this, do that, do this, do that. And we go, okay. <laughs> and we just go along with, with those decisions without much thought because we want the feelings they give us. The, the emotional addictions inside of us as individuals create so many negative, so many negative uh, um, consequences in our lives. Yeah? So every injury we've got has an, there's a spirit attached to that. Is that Not right? necessarily. You mm. see, the reality is that the spirits will only attach if our injury has an addiction associated with it. Mm. The problem that we do have is that most of our injuries have addictions associated with them and it's the addictions that cause the interrelationship problems with spirits and with people on earth. So, so if we're, we, could have, we could have emotional injuries like fear or grief and if we did not have any will to address our addiction then the spirits would have very little effect on us. But as soon as we get involved in the addiction now we're, mm. now we're going to be affected quite strongly. So could these be different aspects of our personality? Um, not our pristine personality, no. Mm. Um, it will always be associated with some kind of emotional addiction, so some kind of hurt or grief that we've, uh, we've experienced when we were little or some kind of fear that we don't want to feel from when we were little uh, that causes these addictions. And, and most of us desire to have the addiction to be met rather than not met. And whenever it's not met, we get angry. So, so like, for, instance, for example, I've had people in an audience where they've been in an addiction with spirits. They're telling me that they are wanting to stop. They know that they're being influenced by the spirit negatively. They know that it's interfering with their relationship with, that they have with the person on earth. They know that it's interfering with their connection with God. They know that it's even in many cases damaging their relationship with their children. Like some of them have been quite abusive to their children as a result of the spirit influencing them. And yet when I tell them what the addiction is, they get angry with me. So that tells me how much they want to hold on to the addiction mm -hmm. and, and how strongly that addiction is entrenched inside of them. And, and so um, what we need to do, it, you see, if, if you talk about it, if every single person on earth was unwilling to engage in addiction, there would be no spirit influence. It doesn't matter what our condition is, there'd still be no spirit influence. Right? But uh, the pro potentiality of every person on earth not uh, you know, addressing their addictions and not wanting to stay in them is fairly remote at this point. Um, but I do feel down the track that's what will happen.